There's been quite a bit of interest amongst my instrument building friends on how to build a radius dish. You typically use this for putting contour on the back of, a, of an acoustic instrument. And so I'm going to outline here the process I used to make this dish. I made a 30 foot radius dish and there's a little bit of math involved. First thing you have to do, and, and really you can make any radius that you want, but what you have to do is know how big your sanding dish is and then what radius that you want. And there's actually a formula that will tell you how deep to make that curve. Let's say my dish was uh, a 24 inch dish. So I was essentially looking at 24 inches out of a 30 foot circle. So I've posted in the intro to this video links to a couple of different radius dish depth calculators. Um, so you can figure that out. Get that number. You're going to transfer that onto the rail that you're going to use to guide the router. Uh, you're going to draw a fixed line uh, across that rail and then measure down to the depth of the uh, radius dish and then the, uh, the next thing you want to do you're, you're going to want to trace that curve and you're going to do that based on two fixed points so you're going to uh, put a, a fixed point at each end of the rail the and the, they're going to be the width apart of your radius dish you're going to use that to transfer the curve onto the rail. So what you do, I made this adjustable uh, fence and you put that at the depth of the dish and then you guide it along those two fixed points and it will trace that curve onto the rail for you. curve on each of the rails. I use my bandsaw to do this. Nice part about this project is you can use tools you've probably already got in your shop to do it and you don't need to spend any extra money buying any other fancy tools or equipment. And I imagine you've used the bandsaw so I'll just zing through the rest of this for you. The next thing to do is to make an end cap to connect each end of the rails together. Uh, the size of that end cap is going to depend on the router that you're going to use to make the dish. So you want the rails to be as far apart as the width of your router base. And then as you'll see here shortly, on the outside of the rail, you'll put a guide so that you can move the router down the rail to cut out the dish. the finished jig looks like you can see the guides for the router base along the outside of the rails there and you can see they go to just over the center of the of the jig because uh, you'll be rotating the, the dish to cut the groove and then moving the router down the rail This is the jig set up ready for use. You can see the jig itself is a, is a little bit longer than the dish and the rails on the outside uh, will keep the router in place. You can see that there's a dust collector hooked to the end of the router. I've got a mask on. This makes a lot of dust. So if you want to do it in a spot where you uh, either collect the dust 
or do it where you don't have concerns about creating a lot of dust. And so what what you do, I, I have a half inch router bit on the end, and what you do is you you move the dish, you have it fast, you have it secured in the center, and then rotate it in a clockwise direction as you slowly move the router down the rail. Then you can see by the time you get to the center, you'll have exactly the dish that you were looking for. thing you need to do before you can use your dish is put some type of abrasive paper on there and I used a spray adhesive and sprayed it on the dish and then put sheets of sandpaper on there. I have 180 grit on it right now. So once you get those glued down and trimmed off, you are ready to use your dish and I know I went through things kind of quickly, so if you have any questions, please send me a note or reach out somehow, and I'd be glad to answer any of your questions.